Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Rundown. We're going to go over the MLB game scheduled for Thursday, June 30th, 2022. Obviously, you can see I'm not at the usual location. I'm actually at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. So I'm on a little bit of a vacation, but we're not taking a vacation from these videos. We're still going to go over every single MLB game for Thursday, as well as Friday. I'll also be here for Friday's video as well. You guys know what to do. Hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. If you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at pickdogs.com at the premium picks tab. Alrighty, here we go. Here are the games for Thursday, June 30th. First up, we see a matchup between the Minnesota Twins and the Cleveland Guardians. Then we're going to see Shane Bieber on the mound for the Guardians and Chris Archer for the Minnesota Twins. You guys know Chris Archer is a guy that I am looking for regression as the season continues. He's in the bottom 21st percentile in expected ERA, bottom 18th percentile in barrel percentage, and well below average in most important pitching matchups or metrics. If you look on his baseball savant plate page, it looks like an igloo. A lot of blue stats there. So he's below average in most important stats. And, and that's where I worry about Archer is he's really susceptible to anything. He doesn't earn a lot of strikeouts. He walks a lot of batters, can give up those home run balls. And the Cleveland Guardians have been a strong lineup against right-handed pitching this season. And they have their ace on the mound in Shane Bieber, who, although he is susceptible to giving up home runs himself, I, would see, I wouldn't be surprised to see him give up a homer or two to the Twins lineup. I still think he's the better option on the mound. I also think the Guardians have the better bullpen as well. So this is a steep price you have to lay with Cleveland, but I do think it makes sense. I'm going to take the Cleveland Guardians on the money line. Next up, we see the Atlanta Braves taking on the Philadelphia Phillies. Ian Anderson and Aaron Nola are your starters for this one. Now, Ian Anderson's a guy that going into the season, I said I really wasn't the biggest fan of, at least for this particular year. He has struggled, although he's got a 6-4 winning record. He's got a 4.6 ERA, a 1.45 whip. He's only got 65 strikeouts and 74 in the third inning, which isn't terrible, but still not really earning those strikeouts. Walking a ton of batters, including four walks in his last outing against the L.A. Dodgers, where he went four innings, six hits, four earned runs, a home run, and four walks in a loss there. I really just can't back him in this spot. I think Aaron Nola is the far and away better starting pitcher. You guys know that Aaron Nola going into the year was one of my starting pitchers that I had my eyes on in terms of success. And although he's got a losing record of four and five, he's got a 2.98 ERA, 109 strikeouts. It's fifth in the NL in strikeouts. A .90 whip is fourth in the NL. So he is pitching very well. I still think his ERA has more room to decrease. I could see it at 2.7 or below. Give me the Philadelphia Phillies here on the money line. Next up, we see the Houston Astros hosting the New York Yankees. We love this rivalry. We just got to see a few games at Yankee Stadium. Now we're going to see right back at Minute Maid Park in Houston, Luis Severino and Luis Garcia. So a pair of Luises on the mound for this contest. Now, Luis Severino hasn't looked the same in his last two starts, his first two starts back from the injury, which is a little bit concerning. You look at his last outing against these Houston Astros, he went six innings, giving up three earned runs and a home run. Wasn't the worst start of all time, but he did get the loss in that game. The Astros went on to win 3-1. to one. The previous start to that one, Severino also struggled five innings, five earned runs, two home runs. So he's going to have three home runs in his last two starts, a combined six walks in those last two as well. Although he's still striking out batters, it's just tough to back him in this spot. You know, I really wasn't that impressed with the Yankees' performance this week against the Oakland A's. Now, sure, they swept that series, but the Oakland A's are arguably the worst team in baseball. So the Yankees weren't even able to cover the run line in all three of those games. I think that does say something on the road here against a Houston team that does not like this Yankees lineup whatsoever. I do think Luis Garcia is the better option. And I'm going to take the Houston Astros here at home. I think we're getting a decent price here with Houston. They play competitive ball at Yankee Stadium in that first four-game set. I think they get the win in this spot. So give me Houston on the money line. Next up, we see the Milwaukee Brewers taking on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Now we're going to see JT Brubaker and Adrian Hauser on the mound for this contest. I think JT Brubaker is the far better starting pitching option. So I'm willing to take the Pittsburgh Pirates here in the first five innings. I think the Milwaukee Brewers have one of, if not the best, bullpens in the league. I think they have a very good lineup as well, and I don't really trust Pittsburgh's bullpen at all. I think Derek Shelton sometimes is caught mismanaging that bullpen also, leaving in guys out of the bullpen far too long when they clearly don't have it. Guys like Anthony Banda I've seen plenty of times blow games. So I just don't trust this Pirates bullpen, but I do think they get to Hauser in this spot early. We've seen Hauser really struggle as of late. You look at his last outing against the Blue Jays, gave up nine base hits and five earned runs and only six innings of work. 
He's given up at least three earned runs in each of his last four starts. I'm going to take the Pittsburgh Pirates here in the first five innings on the money line. Next up, we see the AL East matchup between the Toronto Blue Jays and the Tampa Bay Rays. Yusei Kikuchi and Jeffrey Springs, a pair of lefties going at it in this contest. Now, to me, there's no doubt that Jeffrey Springs is the better starting pitching option. 2.25 ERA compared to Kikuchi's 5.8 ERA. And Kikuchi, I still think, is the weakest link in this Blue Jays rotation by far. We saw him struggle last time out against the Brewers. He only went two innings, giving up six hits, five total runs. Only two of those were earned, but he gave up two home runs as well. He's given up at least two home runs in four of his last five starts. That's extremely worrisome. And then Tampa Bay Rays, although their offense hasn't been the best as of late, against left-handed pitching, it is top 10 in the league in the last 30 days in terms of WRC+. plus. So I think the Rays can get to Kikuchi early. Now, I know this Blue Jays lineup is tough to beat, but I think Jeffrey Springs gives the Rays their best chance in this particular series to grab a win in Game 1. It's going to be a tough series for Tampa Bay on the road, but I think they're competitive enough to get a win here in Game 1. Give me the Rays on the money line. Next up, we see the Cincinnati Reds taking on the Chicago Cubs as they wrap up their series at Wrigley Field. Graham Ashcraft and Kyle Hendricks are your starters here. Pretty tricky game, in my opinion, a pretty close game. That's why we see the Cubs only as minus 125 favorites on the money line. I am going to trust the Chicago Cubs lineup a little bit more than Cincinnati's, especially against a right-handed pitcher. Chicago Cubs against righties in the last 30 days have been pretty good. You look at team OPS numbers, they're in the top 10, while the Cincinnati Reds rank 23rd, 24th in isolated power as well. So even though Kyle Hendricks has been super inconsistent and tough to get a read on, sometimes he pitches well at home, sometimes he struggles really badly at Wrigley Field. Sometimes he pitches well on the road. Sometimes you can't even think about backing him on the road. But in this spot, I think he's good enough here for the Cubs bats to back him up. Not my favorite game on the board, but I'm going to take the Chicago Cubs on the money line. In our next matchup, we see the Oakland A's taking on the Seattle Mariners. We're going to see Adrian Martinez and Logan Gilbert on the mound for this contest. Now, the Mariners are huge favorites in this spot because of Logan Gilbert being on the mound, because of the Oakland A's record. But... You know, like I mentioned, I wasn't necessarily impressed with the Yankees this week. I know they got the sweep win, but the Oakland A's were still able to cover a run line in that series. They actually had a few leads in that series as well, game one and game three. They had pretty good leads early on. So even though they did wind up blowing those games in the end, I still think they're competitive enough here against the Seattle Mariners team. It's five games below 500 overall, two games below at home. And the Oakland A's have been a lot more competitive on the road this year than they have been at their own stadium, which is kind of strange, but it makes sense when you, you play at the Oakland at the Coliseum as there's virtually about six people there every home game. But uh, none, nonetheless, I'm going to take the Oakland A's here, getting one and a half runs. You know, Logan Gilbert giving up two home runs in his last start, a home run allowed in the previous start as well. He is struggling a little bit. I know both of those games were against the Los Angeles Angels, but still, when you're giving up those home run balls and you're susceptible to them like he is, as his barrel percentage, average exit velocity, and hard hit percentage are well below average, league average. I, I do struggle to get there with the at minus 200 in this spot. I'm going to take the Oakland A's here, plus one and a half on the road. In our final game of the night, we see the San Diego Padres taking on the Los Angeles Dodgers. We've got a few great games on the board. we got the Yankees-Astros series, Braves-Phillies wrapping it up. The Rays-Blue Jays, a pretty good rivalry there. And now we got Padres-Dodgers, a pair of NL West teams looking to try to take over for that division crown. Padres 46-31 and 31 at the time you're recording this. Dodgers 45-28. and 28. Now they still have some games to play tonight, but you know I think this is going to be a great matchup with Joe Musgrove and Mitch White. You know Mitch White, although he's got a 4.25 ERA, and although in the last game he started in, the, the Dodgers wound up losing. I don't think it was his fault. I think he actually did a decent job against a really tough Atlanta Braves offense. It was his first game back to the majors after being sent down to the minors. I thought in his few starts in the majors this season, I thought he pitched well enough to earn a job in the major league level. Obviously, when you play for the Dodgers, it is tough to crack that roster. But you know, I think Mitch White is a formidable starting pitcher. And the San Diego Padres, without Manny Machado, without Fernando Tatis, this isn't a loaded lineup. And you look at Joe Musgrove, sure, on the year, 2.12 ERA, one of the best numbers in baseball, 8-1 and one record this season. However, you look at his last start against the Phillies, Six innings, seven hits, six earned runs, two homers. Previous start to that one, he gave up a home run to the Cubs. So he's hit, getting hit pretty hard. He only had one strikeout in his last out against the Phillies. Something looks a little off with Musgrove, and the Dodgers are the type of team to make you pay for it, especially at Dodger Stadium. 
I just don't think we can pass this price. When are we going to get the Dodgers at home at this kind of price in the, down the road this season? I don't think we're going to see it, especially in a nationally televised game. Give me the L.A. Dodgers on the money line. And that's it. Those are the games for Thursday, June 30th. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comment section below. Again, if you're looking for my MLB best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Romanelli. Good luck.